If you think about it, integrating two form fields over surfaces is not that different than integrating one form fields over paths. In particular, we have an independence with respect to the parameterization. We do have to pay attention to orientation as well. Here's an example where that will come up. Consider the integral of the two form field, beta, given by quantity x plus y squared dx wedge dy minus z dy wedge dz. We're going to integrate that over the upper hemisphere in 3D given by the graph z equals square root of c squared minus x squared minus y squared. We're going to take the non-negative values of z and c is going to be some constant. Let's use outward pointing normals and then set up the simplest possible parameterization g. Instead of using s and t, let's use x and y and do the obvious thing. x goes to x, y goes to y, and z is root c squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, that's our parameterization g. The derivative dg is given by what? I take for the first column the partials with respect to x. That's 1, 0, and minus x over root c squared minus x squared minus y squared. Then for the partials with respect to y, I get 0, 1, and minus y over root c squared minus x squared minus y squared. Now to integrate this two form field, beta, over this surface, what do I need to do? I need to start doing some substitutions. I have the double integral with respect to dx dy of that first term, which is quantity x plus y squared, times what? I take that two form dx wedge dy, I feed it the columns of dg, and I get the determinant of the two by two matrix one zero zero one. That part's really easy. For the next term, I have to take minus z, but z is root c squared minus x squared minus y squared. Then I need to take that basis to form dy wedge dz and convert that into a determinant. What do I take the determinant of? It's the two by two matrix where the first row is given by the dy terms, zero and one. The second row is given by the dz terms in the derivative of g, that's minus x, x over root yada 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 and minus y over root all that kind of stuff. Now all of this gets integrated with respect to the area form in the xy plane and this all kind of looks ugly. But if you do those determinants there's a lot of simplification that goes on. In particular that second determinant makes everything really nice. And what we get for the integral of beta is the double integral over the disk of radius c in the xy plane of quantity x plus y squared for that first term plus x for that second term, all with respect to area. Expanding out that quadratic, we get x squared plus quantity 2y plus 1x plus y squared. Now, this is a non-trivial double integral, so let's think. I see that middle term, that 2y plus 1 times x, that is symmetric with respect to x. It's odd in x, and we're integrating over a symmetric domain in the xy plane. That means that that middle term in the double integral is 0. And so I'm going to get rid of that, and what's left over is the double integral of quantity x squared plus y squared. Now I'm integrating that over a disk in the plane. This is just crying out for polar coordinates, so let's convert this. We integrate as theta goes from 0 to 2 pi, r goes from 0 to c, r squared times the area element r dr d theta. Integrating d theta first gives me theta from 0 to 2 pi. Integrating r cubed gives me r to the fourth over 4 from 0 to c. That gives me a final answer of pi times c to the fourth over 2. That's a good example.